Sandy. Get going, come on, little Sandy. Get moving. Well, I got my beach hall and I'm heading down to the surf. Okay, what about a show about a big cuddly lion who loves honey? Like, he really, really loves honey. Bears love honey. Yeah. Lions are cuter. Bears are more cuddly. There's already a show about a bear being developed on one of the other stations. Really? Yep. It happens all the time in TV. You think you're onto something and then... Zeitgeist. It's the dearth of fucking originality is what it is. That's why he's running this station. But there must be something you can buy. Nothing. Well, I suppose you better come back then. He's just bought everything. What are you talking about? Murdoch is in New York. He's just spent a million pounds buying every piece of programming available. We'll have nothing to put on. Except your fucking teddy bear oh, show. Right. Just relax. Where's your dad? He's in London with his new lady. Speaking of ladies, I've met someone. We need to speak to him. I don't know. We need She's to get him really involved. really nice. Shut, Shut up, Kerry! Bring the bottle. Uh, I'll sell you 25% of Television Corporation, and that way you can have a proper stake in Channel 9. Mm. What about seats on the board? I never looked a bargain with you, do I, Rupert? An attempt at modesty, is it? <laughs> it's just business, sir, Frank. Rubbish. You've just beaten the two biggest media proprietors in the country. And you bypassed the Prime Minister's wishes while you were at it. Play it straight. Tell me what you want. Well, I want two seats on the board. I bet you do. With voting rights. Of course. <laughs> and in return? In return, you give me access to the one million pounds worth of content that you stole. Well, I did pay for it. It was mine. Hmm. I'm happy to share. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. Well done. It's a shame I can't make the next board meeting. You yeah, the money to pay for all this, Rupert? Well, I can get it. You spend too much. You get carried away, Rupert. You get all dreamy. Well, what else is there to do? Win. Yes, there is that. The final issue on the agenda is the contract for the coaxial cable between Melbourne and Sydney. Yeah, it's too costly. Increase our networking capabilities. Look, we've got a good setup now. Things are flowing well between all of our stations. Yeah, but this is the best technology currently available for all the media outlets. It's a waste of money. Well, it's an investment in the future. I don't care about the future. That doesn't make any sense. You said you weren't going to be at this meeting today. That makes you a liar. Look, um, let's not get personal. Let's let's vote. I'll raise your hand if you're in favour of our investment in the coaxial cable. Out there, you, you are crescents, both of you. Dad, you just sitting on your fat ass all day, coming up with your brilliant ideas, hey, Mr. Brainy, Mr. I want an education. You couldn't even see him sneaking up our backside. Dad, just you, you sitting at this. What? You couldn't even throw a punch. The whole world got to see your stupid face smashed in. They all got to see the beating he gave you. Get the car. You know what you're getting yourself into. Clyde, give here.
bloke, you know. How are the pals looking? The men's is in front by a long shot. Yeah, well, we said that in 61 and he's still nearly lost. Well, this could help, Menzies. How? No, I've never seen anything like this before. This has got people all over the Western world scared. Let's see how that helps my PM, though. Well, what do you want when you're scared? A cattle. <laughs> you're not far wrong. You want reassurance. You want stability. You want, you want things to stay the same. Yeah. Gary, get the Prime Minister on the phone. What do you want me to say? That wants you to say anything, you idiot. I'll do the talking. As the Australian public have cast their votes, Americans mourn a great president. You knew him well, didn't you, Prime Minister? Indeed. I shared many occasions with Mr Kennedy. We've got link ups all over the country so we can get a bit of a sense of what everyone's feeling out there. Yeah. Are we interested in what everybody's feeling? Yeah. I mean, we haven't got coverage in Wollongong thanks to our new partner. Well, gosh, Clyde, the Packers have finally made it to Wollongong. Somebody opened the Bollinger. Dad, this is the largest live broadcast we've ever attempted. Yeah, it's also the most expensive. You're over budget. You never gave me a budget. You're still over budget. I've set up a camera at the Telegraph newsroom so we can cut to Reed for his comments. You see, that's a good idea. No, 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 we've got the computer in Canberra. Yeah, but have you seen the computer guy's head? <laughs> Not made for TV. It's about the computer. Yeah, have a word with the Prime Minister. We stick together. That's what you do in tough times. Welcome to our live election coverage. Tonight, we have a list of experts to keep you up to date as votes are counted. And in an Australian first, we have a technological advance that will give us unprecedented insight. Crichton, are you there? Yes. This computer can predict the outcome of the election. Before all the votes are being counted? That's right. It uses a newly developed algorithm to calculate a possible outcome of an as yet unknown future. How does it work? The numbers are fed in here, then a prediction appears on the screen. And what's it telling you now? No, nothing at this stage. We need a few more votes in. <laughs> <laughs> right. You tell them I'm ready. And now, crossing live to the Daily Telegraph newsroom and Australia's leading political reporter. Are you there, Alan Reid? Sir Robert Menzies is back in, and we'll be saying so in the edition that's going out now. It's 8.35. Get him off. You're calling the election. That's right. Menzies wins. <laughs> and thank you, Alan. We'll cut back to you later. It'll still be Menzies. <laughs> Yes, Dad. Dad said sack the computer. <laughs> Lots of open plan office space. Plenty of light. What sort of business are you thinking of opening? A uh, newspaper. Well, we've got one of those. The Canberra Times. Oh, no, mine's different. It'll be national. Why do you want to run it out of here? Well, here's where everything happens. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. I haven't told you the price. Also need some uh, accommodation. A uh, house? Uh, no, my staff, some flats, units. I also noticed there were some tracts of farmland just outside the town centre. G'day, John. How'd you find me? Well, there are only two options and the bank isn't open on a Sunday. Uh, maybe not to you. Deputy Prime Minister. It's an honour. You, Blackjack, are a legend. Sorry, you are... Oh, this is my uh, real estate agent. Any friend of Mr Murdoch's a friend of mine. Well, I guess everyone knows that you're here now, Rupert. Welcome. We got found in an office for us. And, uh... I think I've found a house for us, too. What have you two been up to all day? Nothing. There's nothing to do here. I thought we were both going to give it a try one last time, Pat. I am. 
Why is she drawing on the wall? Hmm? I don't know. Is there someone else? Well, you've hardly been a saint yourself. I'm not fighting now, okay? Come on, darling, give me that. Can you, can I have a, you should pack up your crayons. I can't stay. I can't stay here. Welcome, everybody, to Australia's first national newspaper. Australian. That's right. Now, I don't want to make a big speech. But you will. Well, <laughs> you can indulge me for a minute. Now, I have spent uh, a great deal of time and money building up my tabloids and other various business interests so that I could get to this. A national newspaper of significance. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm sure you all remember the faceless men story. Now, this made Caldwell look like a chump, and the Labor Party's chances against Menzies just evaporated. Now, just forget us the Telegraph for a moment. I don't necessarily agree with all the ideas in this story, but this is good journalism. It means something, and it had an effect. Now, we are going to do good, serious journalism. We are in Australia's capital. And the people who make the decisions that count are just out there. Okay, now, we're gonna put the whole paper together in this building. The compositors and printers are right underneath you. And once we lock off copy, we are going to fly the mats out to Sydney and Melbourne uh, for printing. Fly? Well, yes, until the coaxial cable is um, fixed and sorted out, we're gonna to have to fly them. Um, um, I'll just shut up now. Let me show you around. Come on. Are they for us? If you stay here for more than three years, you get to keep one. Have we got any money left? What are the chances we get Alan Reid over from the Telegraph? He really is the best political correspondent in the country. I gotta get him away from the packets. Why? What are they paying? I don't know. Well, you should know. You should know how much every good writer in Australia is being paid. Everyone's got their price, Max. I'm sorry, sir. No, if those mats don't get to Sydney, I don't have a newspaper. There's too much fog. I'm not allowed to fly. There's no fog. This is... this is mist. What is this? I think it's a bridge of uh, the River Kwai. Hmm? Why haven't they put my bloody race on? Sir Frank, I want my race. What are you looking at? Bloody TV. No, no, no. What's on the screen? I think it's William Holden. It's yeah, River Kwai. You're on Channel 7. What? You're on Channel 7. Put it back to us and I'll get them to replay the race. Who changed the bloody channel? I'll fix it. Oh, yeah, you fix it. What, like you fixed Murdoch? Oh, Frank, don't start that. Why did you ever let him have the mirror? I thought it was sent in broke. Oh, well, that worked, didn't it? Where are my boys? Why are they here? They have wives now, Frank. They have their own families. Why don't they bring them here? Hello. Thank you. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Sit. Here. 
Just let it all out. Here, drink it. Mm. Tastes like honey. Mm-hmm. Take off your shoes. Sometimes it's best to just give it in. Is it too cold? It's not cold at all. You miss Sydney? Sometimes. Do you? What do you miss? The bookshops. Really? I used to get a coffee on Sunday morning and go and stand in the one on Oxford Street. Me, I'm newspapers all the way. And she can't read them all the time. Why not? Because they're the same thing over and over. Yeah, but the news is different every day. Yes, but the newspapers aren't. What do you want to do then? I promise you won't laugh. Oh, we'll see. I like to write a novel. Well, that might be a book I can read. You're thinking of putting down roots? Well, you know, I've been a gypsy for a few years now. It'd be nice to have a place of my own. And this is your idea of home? No. Well, needs a bit of work. Who is she? I'll tell you what, uh, don't go to the agent yourself. Why not? Just get someone to arrange the purchase for you and keep your name out of it. People know who you are now, Rupert. <laughs> You're welcome to stay. Of course. I mean, for good, forever. I need someone to look after me. Ain't Henry? Henry is too spoiled. <laughs> Are you asking me to marry you, Frank? No, so, you know, I want Frank to look after you. I mean, you know, I'll take you everywhere you want to go. I mean, the house can be yours. You know. Huh. All right. All right, I'm asking you to marry me. I need a wife, Lawrence. Right, you know, Henry and I can still give good chase when we need to. Hello, Dad. <gasps> oh, here's the other. Him, no. Hey. <laughs> Come on, bring him over. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Meet your grandson. <laughs> See. Can't be a packer then. <laughs> hey, hello. You got a name for him? James. Excellent. Excellent name. January 20, 1966, a day of drama, a day on which the Prime Minister, Sir Robert Menzies, announces his retirement after an unprecedented 16 consecutive years in office. Murdoch, you've been making inquiries overseas. So? So, you've expanded this little empire anymore. 
He'll have the power to get rid of us. He'll be able to borrow larger sums of money. We can borrow large sums of money, Dad. With his stake in Channel 9, he can put all of our TV interests in jeopardy. Think he'll try to take over a bit? Yes. That's the bird. And we... We need to stop him. He doesn't know how to stop, does he? We hobble him, then. Don't shrug your shoulders, Kerry. Think about it. Just... Just switch your brain on. And speak. Can we get him out of Channel 9 for good? That would be the best outcome, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, we need to come at him sideways. That's that's what he does. Yeah. Smoke. Why don't we use Henderson? Yeah, well, he got us into this mess in the first place, didn't he? Eh? Selling him the mirror. He's not much chop as a businessman, is he? No. That's why he'll be so useful. We're selling the whole publishing out. Well, this is most unexpected. <laughs> we want you to have first crack at it. Oh, what sort of money are you looking at? That's the trick, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to figure out what things are worth. Dad. Now, when I met my first wife, I thought, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> I'll never look at another woman. But I did, <laughs> eventually. Why don't I write down some figures? Women love men with power. That's what they say. Do you know what they love even more? A soft word. Well, maybe when you have a price in mind. Yeah, look, man, you know, I'm not going to give them away, I tell you that much. Oh, OK, OK. I need this to happen quickly, Rags. I've got uh, some personal matters. Oh, nothing serious, huh? Oh, no, no, we just need an operation, that's all. <laughs> well, I won't lie to you, Sir Frank. I mean, uh, ACP's a top-shelf investment. I, <laughs> I'm not sure I can pull together the sort of money you'd want for something of that calibre. Well, maybe you can find someone to go in with. Share the stake. You look good. Or oh, that we're up with. No, no. Are you sure? G'day, Rupert. Hello, Hendo. How are you? Good. Good. You know Frank Brown? Hello, Frank. Had an interesting meeting with Sir Frank and Kerry this morning. Well, they are fascinating. They're selling the publications out. Bulletin, Women's Weekly, Telegraphs. Why? Well, Sir Frank's got a new wife. His health is not good. He made an offer, obviously. Indeed. You can tell me how much yourself, if you like. Well, your spies will find out for you. <laughs> Around 20. Do you think that'll be enough? No, it's a good offer. Mm. You're always a little generous, Rupert. Well, others have thought my generosity would sink me in the past, haven't they? Fair play. I thought perhaps you might want to come in with me. We could make them an offer they can't refuse. See how you go at uh, around 20, and um, if you get it for that, good on you. Otherwise, give me a call. Good to see you. You too. Have you got a tip? I don't gamble. Well, I guess that's our day at the races. I'd say so, yeah. Well, Henderson's already put in a bid. I need to go in at least uh, at 22. Okay, call me back. It's a lot of numbers. <sighs> the day's finally come. I know, that's why I'm here. Thought you weren't supposed to see what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm just going to do one more thing. No. Oh. Packer's selling his papers. How much? I'm going in at 22. Million? I think I've got someone to lend me the money. It's a large debt, Rupert. Is now really the time? I can get this price right. We can take the Packers out once and for all. Game over. Kerry! <coughs> Kerry! <laughs> Offers from both of them. Where the hell does Rupert get his money? I don't know. And right now I don't care. Come on, call the meeting of the board. Well, Rupert is on the board. They'll call him in today. No, no, no. I think you'll find that uh, little Rupert is otherwise engaged at the moment, son. Yeah.
dress. Are you sure you have everything? Yes, thank you. I bet you've forgotten something. Yeah. Kits for your new wife. Now promise me no working on our honeymoon. Of course not, Anna. What can I possibly do in London? I'm offering you my publishing arm. Now I've had uh, offers from News Limited and Fairfax. Where is Rupert? He's on a plane. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm prepared to offer ACP at a, at a slightly lower price than he's offering. I mean, Rupert does tend to overspend, doesn't he? <laughs> and uh, after some thought, I've you know, decided to hang on to the telegraphs, but you can have the rest of it. What kind of money are we talking about? No, I don't want, I don't want cash. Just shares in Television Corporation. So what you want is a larger stake in Channel 9? Yes. And in doing so, we cut Mr Murdoch's share of Channel 9 considerably. Yeah, that's true. So Frank, yeah. you did a deal with Murdoch not so long ago that gave him those very shares in 9. And now I want them back. Perhaps you need to talk to him. Forget about him. I'm offering you a highly profitable business at a very good price. We'll abstain from the vote. Well, if he's not here, we won't vote either. Oh, yes, good. Are we legally allowed to vote in a board member's absence? Yes. You still have the quorum. And of course, we'd like your, your answer immediately. Mm. Right. We'll be outside. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a show of hands, please. Sir Frank. Geek. Is Clyde there? No, sorry. I'm on Geek. You should put him on. He's really not here. I haven't seen him in a couple of days. I'll get him to ring, will you? Will do. Right, uh, I'm getting too old to chase you boys around. <laughs> well, you should have given that up years ago. Does he talk to you? Clyde. Not really, no. Maybe I should have let him go to university. No, that's long forgotten, Dad. I just thought I never saw the point. I mean, life teachers, you're not books. Dad, you just knocked off Murdoch. You're king again. <laughs> Even managed to outlast the PM. <laughs> Cheers. To you and Sir Robert. Yeah, stuff Menzies. Cheers to us. Hello? Oh, yes, no, no, good day, mate. You're right. Fire away. What? When? Oh. What's, what's the, um, what's the upshot? Okay, well, give me the numbers. No, 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 just give me the raw numbers now. I'll work it out. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll call you back. You promise no working. Rupert? Don't you like it? <sighs> you look beautiful. They tricked me. Who? Of course, he wasn't going to sell the papers. Rupert, please. Packer used my offer to buy ACP, the magazines and the papers, to do a deal with Television Corporation, and he now has 6.1 million new shares. So? So he now owns 75% of Channel 9. And how much do you have left? Oh, he's reduced my share from 25% down to 10. That's not very much. No, that's right. And I will have no say at all on what happened to Channel 9 now. I don't understand. How could this have happened? Uh, while we've been honeymooning here, 
I was being raped in Sydney.